morning, Washington. It's the 14th, the 14th of October, 2011. Uh, crazy weather here last night. Uh, lots of big storms, wind, lightning, rain. It's still kind of raining today, but it, that the sun is actually threatening to come out. So hopefully we'll have a nice weekend. Anyhow, uh, welcome to Dave TV on DCRDV.com. Got a uh, interesting thing for you today. Um, Mark Seagraves is a reporter for WTOP Radio and for Channel 7 WJLA, and he hosts a show called News Plus on Channel 50 W, uh, I always call it WDCW, which is what it is, WBDC, WFTY, which colors do they have now? WDCW, right. Anyhow, <clears throat> uh, the show's on at like 7 something in the morning on Fridays and 10 a.m. on Sundays, not a time... I mean, who's going to be watching Channel 50 and 7 o'clock or 7.30 in the morning on, on a Friday? But, you know, so we missed it. Today, I missed it. But anyhow, he uh, is doing a series now on local radio people. And he's going to have Big Tigger from WPGC on next weekend. But this weekend show, he's got Mike O'Mara on. And Mike O'Mara says a few interesting things about his recent gig with... Uh, 105.9, which just ended. Mike, Mike Amara, uh, self-described radio god. Uh, Mike, uh, it seems every time we meet, uh, you're out of a job. <laughs> you're right. I can't help it. It's uh, it's radio. It's my world. It's the way it goes. Thank God I've got a podcast. And I say that every single day. Thank God I've got the internet. You know, the last time, last year, we had you on, and you actually got the News Plus Bounce. We did something on your podcast, That's right. and you landed a, a gig at 105.9 FM. You know what I landed, Mark? I landed one year of pure hell. <laughs> one year of you? total misery. No, it was fun. It was great to be back on in the morning again, but uh, unfortunately, in the uh, in the world of radio, sometimes things don't always work out. But, I, you know, the thing that I'm happy about is that, seriously, I still have my podcast, and that is my First love. It has been since we started almost two years ago, and that's what I'm enjoying. You know, the radio business, it's great because there's so many great people in it, but uh, when things go awry, as they have, uh, you just have to uh, suck it up and move on, like anybody in life. I mean, in this economy, everybody's dealing with their tough stuff, and uh, I'm just delighted that I've got the podcast with the guys that I work with, and uh, I see them every day in my living room. But it really is a way of life for those of you who don't work on the number one rated radio station in Washington, Oh, my God. That's the reason he brought me down here. You're so cruel. Uh, but it really is, all kidding aside, it really is a way of life in radio. I mean, how yeah. many times have you been fired? Uh, this really is the second time that I've been fired. But unfortunately, it's happened within, you know, a five-year period. So it's very frustrating. The industry has changed dramatically. Uh, anybody that's in the industry knows that. Uh, it's tougher. They give you much less time to establish yourself. And the budgetary situations are, you know, result in people getting paid a lot less money. And also they don't have the money to put behind new programs like I had to promote it. And it's frustrating because uh, we had a good product. I worked with Kirk McEwen and we had a very good show. But it's the reality. And if you take it personally at the end of the day, you're, you're going to be ultimately less happy. And I don't choose to do that. I, I really do believe, though, that as much as I love radio. Hey, when I came over to the New World, I thought it was Asia, first of all. I didn't think it was America. You know, right? That the podcast world is the future. And, you know, I've got my feet in that. And I'm excited about that. Well, you know, a lot of people in town probably remember you most notably from the Don and Mike show. Right. More than 20 years, right? Yeah, absolutely. The two of you really ruled the radio waves, mm -hmm. uh, had a very successful show. And you take a lot of that show and a lot of those characters to your podcast. The characters are not necessarily as big a part of the podcast as they were uh, with different radio incarnations. A lot of people that want me on the radio want the voices, the voices, the voices. And I love doing the voices. And I usually start the podcast with what we call a little vignette at the beginning of every show and do a little something. Uh, uh, but, but really, the podcast is more what I think the hot talk format was, the guy talk format with just a bunch of guys that are busting chops, hanging around in a living room, talking like you would hear your, you know, your, your friends talk. I know we measure podcasts differently than we measure radio ratings by downloads. Mm -hmm. You've been doing it now going on two years. Mm -hmm. How many times has your show been downloaded? Uh, the total downloads that we have now, we have been uh, downloaded 9.5 million times. Uh, we will hit 10 million, we estimate, somewhere in uh, the end of November or December. 
We're going to have a big celebration for that. And we average uh, anywhere between 30 and 35,000 downloads a day. And you do it uh, five days a week? Do it uh, five days a week with uh, two shows on Thursday. We have a bonus hour each week, an uncensored bonus hour that is a pay per listen. And uh, that's how we monetize the show, along with advertising and merchandising. And uh, so we do six shows a week. Do you expect to be back on terrestrial radio at some point? Do I expect to be back on? I don't know. I, I don't think that I go into it this time with the same attitude because the business has changed so dramatically. Do I say never? You can't say never in this business, but I also say what I want to do. And what I want to do right now is take some time to focus on what I'm doing, focus on the podcast and stay with that. That's what that's been my first love since I started doing it. I have more satisfaction doing that podcast than any radio show that I've ever done. That includes Don and Mike. That includes the Mike O'Mara show. I really love doing this. And what is your advice to younger people? You must have interns that come through and people who are like, well, I want to be in radio. And what do you tell them? Run! Now, uh, I, I say that it's a different time uh, as far as making a living, as far as doing what I did. I was very, very lucky in the 80s and in uh, the 90s to, to do what I did. It was a very lucrative situation for me. Uh, it has changed. Like the rest of the world has changed economically, it is not what it used to be. But if you love it, there are a lot of different ways to get into it. I advise young people to get in on an internship level. You, would, you, know, you know this from your work in radio. You know how many interns go on to work uh, in commercial operations all over the country. It really happens. Go to a school that has an internship program where you can get your foot in the door and work on a show or work with people in radio and be, be an intern because sometimes, you know, interns get promoted to uh, general managers and then all hell breaks. <laughs> Mike, we look forward to your podcast every day. We really do. Thank you, Mark. And I always watch this program religiously. What's it I'm called? with it every Friday what's, what's, morning. What's the name of the show? What's that? What's the name of the show? It's, a, it's called On the Button with Mark Seagrave. <laughs> yes, well. We appreciate the thought anyway. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mike O'Mara from The Mike O'Mara Show, MikeO'MaraShow.com. Did I get that right? MikeO'MaraShow.com, MikeO'MaraShow.com. And you can get his podcast every day, twice on Thursdays. Mike, thanks very much. Thank you, Mark. Then they tell me another guy was there, a Viking, some dude. Yeah, it ain't there's Rob Spiewak. Uh, there's Oscar Santana. And that's Buzz Burbank over there behind the board. Clean them sort of about right now. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, oh, look at that. Michael Mara show. He's got an ad there on the top of the web page. <laughs> uh, I like Mike. I really do. I mean, he's, you know, he, he he's called me up once in a while and yelled at me over things. You know, he's a, he's a, he's a, you know, he's an emotional guy. He is. He's a very emotional guy. But I do like him a lot. I think he's one of the greats of Washington Radio, as I do think about Don Geronimo, too. You know, Don is a crazy guy. We've, we've gotten into feuds on the air. And, uh, you know, but I still think his show is wonderful and it's funny and it's a shame. It's a damn shame that these guys aren't on the Washington Radio dial somewhere, both of them, right now. Because, uh, you know, I listen to these afternoon shows, man. Including the current 106.7 show, man. And I go, oh, God, it's like going to Root Canal. <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh, as for Mike O'Mara ending up on broadcast radio anytime soon, I don't know. You know, I, I think 105.9 made a few big mistakes. A couple big mistakes in their two-year history as a rocker. One of them was the playlist. Man, they needed to open up that playlist and play lots of variety, even if they're going to stick to classic rock. People, I don't know, I'm a rock listener, a long time, go way back in the Washington market, and I want to hear a huge variety. And I don't just want to hear old classic rock from the 70s. I want to hear classic rock from the 80s and 90s, you know? They just wouldn't open up that, that playlist. They, were, they went to a very tight playlist of just some well-worn rock classics, and I, I think that was one of their big mistakes. Another big mistake, 105.9, the edge did they didn't promote the station well it just they didn't you know they didn't promote it well on the other citadel now cumulus stations they didn't do too many ad campaigns i don't know especially the kirk and mike show kirk and mike i think were uh, you know wonderful together i still think they'd be great together i love surf who did the afternoons uh you know um, it was a great the, the on-air talent was great on that station it just didn't work I, I don't think citadel i don't think the folks at citadel were really 
making the right decisions there. I also think that for the Kirk and Mike show in the morning to work, it needed to be all talk, okay? To have them do a little bit and then play some old Alice Cooper song or some Blue Oyster Cult song, in a lot of cases, it chased away listeners. It literally, we want you to listen. Now we're going to chase you all away. Now we want you to come back. And people forget to come back. They flip over to DC 101 or a TOP or somewhere else, JFK, and they forget to come back. And that's what I did a lot. I put on Kirk and Mike for a while. Listen, to, uh, I don't want to hear that Alice Cooper schools out at, at 7.45 in the morning. And, and I'd flip away. So anyhow, uh, yeah, at least we had a year of Mike there on the radio, which was cool. All right. And uh, tip of the old camo cap to Mike. Mike O'Mara show dot com for his podcast, which at least you can listen to. And you can listen to Don Geronimo if you're a big uh, Don and Mike fan. He's on KHTK. Just Google that on your uh, Google machine there, and you can get a uh, you can get a podcast or a live stream of his morning show out there in California. All right, folks, that's Dave TV for today. Uh, the uh, 14th of October, 2011. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned and cut.